This week we're back to working on the ballast tanks. We're working on the lid and the flange on the upper side of the tank. You can go back to episode 51, which shows exactly how the ballast tank modification is going to work on the boat. Uh, last weekend we went to LA and Yanni is editing that video. We're really excited to show you everything that happened while we were there. And we also have Ted along this week. My name is Matt. Follow along as I turn Duracell, the legendary ocean racing sailboat, into a comfortable cruising home. So I'm down to the last ballast tank, the upper ballast tank, of glassing in this vertical part in the baffle. I've got the other three done, and so it's just this last one finishing the inside of it. The tough part about these ballast tanks is Every time I move to a new step, I have to do that step four times because there's basically four tanks. And so I'm anxious to uh, move on to the next step with this one as I've been working. I feel like I've been working on this for a really long time. You can do it, honey. It's almost done. It's getting there. I made a form and this is to build right fiberglass right angle stock and this right angle stock is going to be used to build the flange that's on the top the upper tanks upper ballast tanks and you're wondering why I didn't do this the first time with the lower ballast tanks if you'll recall I built the flange I built a mold that went on top of the tank and built the flange into the tank this is the lower tank and it actually slopes in like this on the inboard edge and so if I were to build a right angle flange, it would have been like this. So instead, I had to build my own flange, which came up like this. And then the lid could sit on top of it. And then the upper tanks, this piece is 90 degrees, it's vertical. And so I can just build, whoops, I can just build a flange like that. That's 90 degrees and just build it on the table. What I did is just took some two by fours, fastened them to the table, covered them in smooth tape. And now I am coving the corner between the table and the two by four so that the fiberglass can lay nicely uh, between the two surfaces. And I'm just using some vinyl ester putty, some like fairing putty to make the coves. The advantage to using this stuff is that it dries really fast, it cures really quickly, especially if you add more hardener. It's kind of cold out, so it'll take a little bit more time, but. Is the red stuff hardener? The red stuff is, yeah, methyl ethyl ketone peroxide. Say that 10 times. Yeah. But yeah, it makes a nice smooth cove.
Okay, so I've got these uh, forms built. It's just two by fours on the table, and I've got a bunch of plastic down. Uh, I've actually sprayed some mold release wax onto the whole thing, and now, after I let that dry, now I'm spraying some uh, adhesive, spray adhesive onto the whole thing, and the spray adhesive is to stick the peel ply onto the form, so I'll do peel ply, and then fiberglass, and then more peel ply on top. And that way I just don't have, I don't have to do as much sanding uh, before I install the flange pieces into the boat. So, uh, yeah, as soon as I get the peel ply down, then I can start laminating. <laughs> These are the pieces that we glued up on the table. They're the angle, just like right angle stock. And so we're gonna glue these into the top of the tank and they're gonna make the flange. If you recall from earlier when we did the lower tanks, we built the flange on the tank itself, but since it's all right angles, I can just, I built the flanges on the table and now we're gonna piece them together inside the tank, so.
My mom and I uh, glued in these flanges, uh, the right angle flanges the other day, and the only other flange I have to do is the against the hole, and obviously that isn't a right angle between the hole and the, what the lid will be on the top of the tank. And so I've got this, this is actually my template or my mock-up piece for the lid that's just sitting on the, the fore and aft flanges, and then this will be my kind of form for the outboard flange. So I'm gonna laminate up, up to the underside of it with a tape uh, and then pull it off and we should have a flange that goes all the way around, which will be pretty nice for making sure that the tank stays watertight. Yeah. I prefer was daydreaming there for a moment and he did put on another layer of fiberglass but you'll just have to take my word for it. Do you think our viewers will believe me? Yesterday we laminated the underside of this flange form, so we're going to take it apart and see how it looks. Did it turn out how you were hoping? Yeah, it looks excellent. My mom and I laminated 
a big piece of, piece of flat stock for the lids for these tanks. Per Marcos, he suggested that I add some extra layers to these to make them extra stiff. These tanks were actually structural to the boat, like a stiffener, like a stringer basically. And so, and I, that's why I used all the old parts of the tanks to build the new tanks, but I didn't have enough to build the, the whole thing. And so, um, yeah, this is a, there's a couple extra layers of fiberglass on this one. So yeah, they will just fit in there just like that. And we'll have some access ports on the top of them when they're done along with all the plumbing and all that stuff. So there you go. All done. Not quite. Not quite. The next step is to sand prep it, make sure every, every smooth spot is cleaned up and then we can paint the inside with the tank coat and then I can glue the lids on. And uh, at that point, we're really close to being done constructing the tank. We have a couple more Patreons to thank this week. Uh, first, thank you to Peter who grew up in Portland. He, I actually met him uh, like last year out on the dock uh, in Port Ludlow, I think. And he grew up in Portland racing dinghies. He still races dinghies occasionally, but now him and his wife live up here in Puget Sound and they cruise their CNC 37 Sirius. They do Pacific Northwest, Puget Sound, BC, San Juans. Um, and hopefully we can get Peter out here to help on the boat sometime soon. So thank you very much, Peter. And then uh, also thank you to Dave, who's a friend of mine. Uh, if you're interested in joining our Patreon community, you can find us on patreon.com at the Duracell Project.